thank you so much for joining us at Believing Online today. This is church. I know it's a little different. I know it's maybe not what you expected when somebody shot you a little link and said, hey, I want you to join me at church today. Just click this link and here you are. I know it's different, but we believe that it can be powerful as well too. You know, every Sunday we actually gather as a church inside of the Malco Paradiso at 10 a.m., just right there in the heart of Memphis and have an incredible time of worship, uh, an incredible time of listening to and responding to God's word, environments for kids and all that going on. But on this Sunday, this last Sunday of the year, we, we, we choose to do church in a different way to give our teams a, an opportunity to rest. Many people are out of town. Maybe you're watching this from another city, another state, another, another part of the world right now. We know that. And we wanna give all of our teams just the opportunity to rest and come back strong and full on the first Sunday of next year. But I wanna say thank you to you. My name's Michael, and if we haven't met, Man, what an honor for you to spend a little bit of your Sunday with us. I know you could be doing anything right now, but maybe somebody sent you a link and said, you need to be in church today, and so here you are. Or, or maybe you're a, a regular with us, and, and, and believing is your home, and you're a part of what God is doing in Memphis through believing. It's, it's just an honor that you would take a little bit of time to connect with us today. And for that, I want to say thank you. I also want to say thank you to our team. You know, we have an incredible team of people who serve so faithfully, so diligently in so many different ways to make every single Sunday at Believing really incredible. I mean, our team in B Kids, all of you, investing in kids, helping them learn about Jesus on their level, creating environments inside of movie theaters where kids can feel love and parents can feel safe and kids can have fun and meet friends. And it's incredible what goes on there every single week. And many of them serve so faithfully and for you and to you, I wanna say thank you. Our loading team, load in before anybody gets there, man, it's still dark outside and you're setting things up and you're stacking things and preparing things. And then you're taking a movie theater and turning it into a place for people to connect with God, man. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your commitment to the vision. Our worship team, our production team that leads so much of what goes on in the auditorium every Sunday, playing an instrument or singing songs or running cables or creating environments with lighting and with video and with the audio and everything that goes on. Thank you for investing in people and thank you for serving God with your unique talents and abilities. Our hosting team, my goodness, standing at doors and directing and bringing in coffee and providing umbrellas for people when it's raining and, and serving our guests and all of that every single week. Thank you for all that you do. I, I wanted to take this opportunity just to say thank you. I, I, we say it a lot. We write it. We share it. Your team leads say it. But I wanted you to be able to hear it from me on this day that I'm so grateful to you and for you for the investment you're making into this house in Memphis. Now, what is all that? <laughs> Why am I starting this little Christmas video, New Year's video, sermon thing with all that? Well, what I just did, that is gratitude. See, if you're on the receiving end of any of those teams, any of those areas, I guarantee you and I hope, I pray that you felt that because I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I am so grateful to you and for you. But also, if you serve in any of those areas, if you were a part of our church and saw those people, you wouldn't have to wonder for a second whether or not you thought those people and their service and their investment were significant to me. Why? Because I expressed it. See, I can feel grateful all I want. I can, I can sit at my house. I can be in my car. I can think to myself, man, I am so grateful. But feeling grateful is not gratitude. Being grateful always involves an, an expressing side to it. 
which is exactly what we saw in the scriptures today in Luke 17. Did you read it? That's what that button is right above this, this video here where it had the little verses there. And maybe you skipped over it. Maybe you didn't see it. Maybe you just hit play on a video and whatever. And if you did, I would encourage you right now, go ahead and go ahead and just scroll back up. You can hit pause on this video. I'm going to be right here. I ain't going anywhere. And you can just read those scriptures, then come back in. Because I'm not going to read them for us, but I am going to reference them starting right now. So go ahead and read it. I ain't going nowhere. It's a video. You can pause me. It's cool. See, Jesus runs into, into 10 men, and all of these men have one thing in common. They're all sick. They have a need. They have what's called leprosy. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a sickness, it's a disease, but it was a very visible disease. Your, your skin would literally like rot away. So people didn't have to ask you if something was wrong with you because it was internal. This was painful, but it was also very visible. And because of this, what happened in that day, people with leprosy were often removed from their, their structures of life, their family, their friends, their workplace. They were taken outside of cities and outside of towns into these places where they were going to be together with other people with leprosy simply because they were scared as a, as a community that if someone with leprosy touched someone who didn't have leprosy, that person would then get leprosy. And Jesus runs on to this group of 10 men who all have leprosy and they all come to him because they've heard about him. They've heard that he can heal. They've heard that he has power and power from God. And they say, Jesus, heal us. And Jesus gives them instruction. He says, I want you to go and show yourself to the priests, which was a logical thing to do because that is how you got your clean bill of health, if you will. You didn't go to the doctor and they say, it's okay for you to go back. What you actually did is you would go to the priest and they would give you a stamp of approval that would then tell you, hey, it is okay for you to go and be a part of society again. But this would also be visible. They would see that they are being healed. But even though they didn't see it yet, they started heading where Jesus said go. And what the scriptures actually say is that along their way, they all realized that they were being healed as they went. And I'm sure they celebrated. I'm sure they were excited. And what happens when they realize they're healed is very interesting. Nine of these 10 continue on their way. Nine of the 10 go on and head on to the priest so they can get their clean bill of health. So they can go to their, their wife, then go to their, then go to their kids, then go to their old friends and be like, look, I'm healed. It's okay. We can be together again. But one man, does something very, very significant and interesting. When he realizes that he is healed, he turns around and goes back to Jesus. Now granted, the ones who went on their way were following Jesus' instruction. But the one who went back did something so remarkable. He he was feeling something because for years or months or weeks or however long it had been, he had been ostracized from society. He had been, he had been set out to the side and now he's experienced healing that he had hoped for, healing that he had prayed for, healing that he had desired. And so he went back to Jesus to express his gratitude for what God had done for him. And Jesus commended his faith and his expression of worship because he didn't just feel it, he expressed it. I wonder how many of us would be in this group of nine this year? Like, like God has done some awesome things in your life. Things that maybe you hoped for, things that maybe you prayed for, th uh, things that, that you could have only dreamed of being a reality a year ago. And now they are your reality. He's met needs. And maybe, maybe we just walked along. Maybe God has done for you, has brought to you exactly what you needed, exactly what you prayed for, but yet you've just carried on your way. See, there's something this man does that, that I find very important because the other nine just carried along their normal business. And the 10th guy, the guy who went back to Jesus was gonna have to ultimately go to the priest. He's going to have to ultimately get his clean bill of health so he could go back into society. It's what he wanted to do. But before he did that, he had the presence of mind to turn back and go back to the one who had brought to him exactly what he needed. See, that's what gratitude takes. See, gratitude 
It actually takes intention. Often for us to express our gratitude, it's not expensive. It just has to be thought through. It's not that an expression of gratitude has to cost a lot of time, cost a lot of money, cost a lot of anything. But there's a good chance that expressing our gratitude is not gonna be convenient, but it's necessary. That's why it takes some intention. See, this man, when he realized he was healed, he turned around and went back to Jesus. There's intention there. He thought it because of what he now saw as his reality. You know, what's sad is that while gratitude takes intention, for many of us, this is where our gratitude dies. Much of what we feel grateful for stops right there as simply intention. I mean, how many times have you said, man, I meant to call them back and say thanks. I meant to send them a gift card. I, I meant to... I meant to let them know how thankful I was that they came. I meant to say thank you for giving me that job. Thank you for connecting me with that person. I meant to, but I didn't. See, gratitude takes intention, but intention is not gratitude. Gratitude, it takes intention, but watch this. Gratitude requires expression. Gratitude is never silent. It's never without investment. That is the proof of the feeling. That is the gratitude, the, the statement that you make, the card that you write, that is gratitude. The gift that you give, the text that you send, that is gratitude. I love the way that the Bible says the man came back. Did you read it earlier? It says that he came back shouting his gratitude. He was like, woo, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I'm gonna get to hold my baby girl. I hadn't held her in years. In fact, she was a baby girl when I let, when I had to be dismissed from town, but now she probably a big girl. I don't mean big girl like big girl. I just mean she grown, you know? And now she's like grown a little bit and I'm gonna get to hold her and I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to love her and I'm gonna get to see my wife again and I'm gonna get to go back to work and I'm gonna get to go to church. I'm gonna get to do all these things that I wasn't able to do. He came back shouting his gratitude. I wonder what he said. I bet Jesus was just smiling ear to ear, listening to this man shout his gratitude, saying how thankful, how grateful he was, that it wasn't just something he felt, but Jesus knew specifically in that moment how that man was grateful. Have you shouted your gratitude yet for what God has done this year? You know, this year is about to end. We've only got a few hours left. Have you shouted your gratitude to God? Have, have you shouted your gratitude to friends? Some of you a year ago were praying for friends like you have right now. Have you told them you're grateful for them in your life? Some of you are working in the job you were hoping to have this time last year. Have you shouted your gratitude to God? for that because we believe that it's God who opens these doors. It's God who provides. It's God who gave us the gift and the ability to be able to get the job. Have you shouted your gratitude yet? Have you shouted your gratitude for your kids? Have you shouted your gratitude to your spouse for opportunities that have come your way? Have you stopped for a moment and taken the intention to express like gratitude requires? See, I think many of us, we just carry on to the next thing to the next appointment, to the next place we got to go. But can I tell you something? If you've never expressed it, even if you felt it, it's time to get grateful. And that's what we want to help you do today. In fact, as soon as this video ends, here's what I would encourage you to do. Just scroll down the page and there are a few questions for you. You can, maybe if you're watching this by yourself, you can take a little journal or a piece of paper and write down, kind of process these questions. Take your phone out and type it in. If you're with a group of people, I would encourage you maybe even just to talk these among yourselves. Maybe it's two of you. Maybe it's a little room full of you watching this. But process these questions together because my hope is that this would help you take the intention that you need to be grateful. And then when our time is done and these questions have been processed, then you'd have everything you need to go and express gratitude like you need to, to whom you need to. 
before we close, I want to pray for you. And again, just say how thankful and grateful I am that you would spend a little time with us today. Let's pray together. God, I love you. I thank you today for the power of technology that would allow us, even on this Sunday when we're not gathered in a physical place, to have our hearts connected and united. And God, I pray for those of us who today, not tomorrow, not next year, but today need to be people who express our gratitude. God, help us to do that. Help us not to push it off to the side, but to be people who express our gratitude. First and foremost to you, for everything that you've done, for all that you have brought our way. God, we thank you today. And God, we thank you for the people in our lives. God, we thank you for the opportunities you've brought our way because we know that they're from you. And on this day, this last Sunday of 2018, God, we thank you for everything you have done. And we will be like that one who turns back and expresses our gratitude. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, again, I'm so grateful that you came and you joined us. You clicked the link. You played the video today. I would love it if you would take a few moments and process those questions below and take the necessary action steps from there. And then I'd love it if next Sunday, if you're in Memphis, you're in the, the area that we're in, I would absolutely love it if you would join us at the Paradiso at 10 a.m for church. We'll have an incredible time as we start a brand new series called This Is The Year that I believe is going to shape in such a powerful, God-honoring way all of this upcoming year for you and yours. So spread the word, invite some friends, man, get that word out, and let's get 2019 started strong by ending 2018 full of gratitude. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today at Believing.